And then the other thing, the thing I looked at too is visualizing success. Like, Mm. like how many, I look at athletes a lot and I I look at them and I go, how many times, like you look at a Tom Brady, right? And he's just in a Tiger Woods, like how impressed, who cares about Tiger Woods personal life, whatever. I I liked it when shit went crazy with him because I was like, oh, he's a real human. Like he likes to have sex. Got it. Okay, cool. But, um, but how many times do you think Tiger Woods has visualized that swing in his head yeah. and has done that swing, like, and in visual, like, visualize the PGA and all the tournaments that he's won? He didn't just go, okay, let's knock some balls. Like, he really manifest. Because how fearful must it be to be on that on that stage? And he's not like the amount of pressure. Oh my from god! Such a young and age. his father alone. It's oh, yeah. a great documentary. I watched. I don't know if you've yeah, seen I saw that it, but. Too. I have so much empathy for him now. Yeah. More, way more understanding. I yeah. really like him. But yeah. but just like visualizing and making it his dream when it really was his father's and then just coming together and, mm-hmm. you know, losing your shit and then having people talk shit about you along the way and then still coming back when they said you'll never have a comeback. But, you know, all and of that racism. could have been crippling. And racism. Like, yeah. that could have all been crippling for him with the fear, mm-hmm. you know, but mm-hmm. he just visualized it. And I think. You know, nothing stood in his way when everyone's like, he's a has-been. He's like, and the one thing, watch me, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Well, the one thing from the documentary that happened mm-hmm. was, you know, the best answer to all the crap that was kind of dealt to him was success. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you just got to focus on what you're doing uh, and what you're trying to do or your goal and your success will answer the fears, will mm. answer the projected fears from other people mm-hmm. um, and conflict mm-hmm. from other people in scenarios. So, um, you know, there, there's there's that too. And what do you need to focus on what you need to do to succeed and be successful? Yeah. yeah. And I'm looking at a lot of these kids and they want to be celebrities. And I'm like, mm. when you actually are the height of a celebrity, because like, you know, Michael Jack. my dad would train Michael Jackson growing up mm-hmm. and the poor man would come in our small little house and he, he loved it when it was just us. But the, the fear home. he had when someone would come to the door that, you know, cause he felt it's safe in a normal home, but like someone would come to the door to pick up, you know, my brother's friend that was there playing and he would just freeze. He would know what to do when he sure. was just so fearful. Sure. It looked like a fish out of water. However, so many people want that type of celebrity. But like, can you imagine? It, it, celebrity is unmeasurable, yeah. being a celebrity. Fame is unmeasurable. Look mm-hmm. at Britney Spears. Like how much Michael would have to stay in his house and not do anything and live like a normal life. And that alone. But then you go on stage. He probably, like Beyonce, names her fear. She gets on stage. She's shy. And then you name it. You look at it. Maybe give yourself an alter ego of sorts. And then just get out there and do it and yeah. put it into... Focus all that energy into your yeah your talent. Into yeah. your talent and find a talent, you know, that you yeah. really love. So yeah. visualizing success and not being scared of it. Because I see so many people self-sabotaging even though, even before they began. Yeah. So yeah, and that's people. what we're talking about. The, the so many behaviors that do self sabotage. Mm-hmm. Um, I must say, with visualization, the one thing that helped me because I remember being pregnant and I'm looking at this massive, I'm fearful beautiful every belly. day with this. Yeah. Uh, I have a belly envy. I was because I do love you? being really? well, I love being pregnant. It was you were so great, great pregnant. Yeah, you were really cute. Um, and one of the biggest, the big fear, and I'm sure a lot of other pregnant women had the same thing is the actual not being pregnant, but the actual like. Birthing. I don't want to talk about it. I'm, I'm so fearful. I'm not fearful, but You're I'm having a baby. You, yeah. And I would, I mean, literally, I did everything we did. Started doing the, um, Malcolm and I started doing this hypnobirthing class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, to help, honestly, just address the fear of the actual birthing. Cause I mean, if you know, think about it, you're putting the size of like a bowling ball down, you know, your, mm-hmm. I mean, my vagina was just like, a little lemon. Yeah. I, I was like, <laughs> a little lime. <laughs> um, and part of hypnotherapy and the practice of it is, is one, you got to divorce the idea of what film and TV. That's what you were saying. What that image is of birthing. Of course, they want co- part of successful TV and drama is drama. The conflict. Mm-hmm. You need conflict for successful. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. screaming and the red face. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you got to visualize, you know, everything getting bigger and opening and like, mm. and trust me for like weeks beforehand, I, you know, you listen to the music and they, they tell you to sit there and just listen and meditate and visualize it so that you have something sure. to go to when the stuff is actually happening mm-hmm. and not for nothing. It helped. 
it helped so much when the time came in so many ways. And visualization is a huge, powerful tool. Mm-hmm. It really, really is in many ways. So, yeah. you know, use your imagination. Being one with your body and just, yeah. yeah. But use your imagination. Mm-hmm. Get, go there. It's okay. And and help yourself to... Uh, one Another thing that's always helped me in life, because I've always... Um, uh, oh, God, what's her name? Well, all of a sudden, her brain, my brain... <laughs> Uh, Shakespeare in Love, the one who played the Grand Queen. Grand Paltrow? No, no, no. Oh. The Queen. Queen. Um, it's been too long. No. Judy Dench. Judy Dench. Yeah? Ha. Huh. So, Judy Dench. Um, she's who she is. You know what she looks like. Yeah. She, you know, she's this small, petite woman with, you know. Fierce. She, yes, but very fierce. She goes, uh, in an interview, she said, she's like, no, I've always pictured myself as a 5'9", willowy blonde. <laughs> and, like, goes and does her little thing. And, and oh. then after that interview, whenever I look at her now, I go, ooh, I see it. Okay. I see, I see her imaging, you know? Mm. And um, so I've always tried to do that. And it's, it's worked interesting. for me. Yeah. It's like animal work that we used to do in, hey. in class. Yeah. yeah. If you have to go in, you can just imagine yourself as like a yeah. big cheetah. That was of, my animal. Oh, was it? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. They're sleek, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just naming the fear. Yeah.